Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another discussion video. In today's video, we're continuing a segment that we've been doing for the past like two months on the channel now. That's going to be six decks you can play going into the November 2019 format. Now, of course, we don't have like regional data or any big tournament data to support like, oh, you should play this deck because it's strong. This deck has been winning, topping this and that. But what we do have are a bunch of new decks coming out in set eight, as well as some older decks that are getting support. I've been talking about a lot of these strategies and a lot of these decks in previous videos. I thought this would be a good way to kind of bring that into one cohesive video and tell you guys what strategies to look out for, what you might be interested in playing, things like that. Maybe we can get a discussion down in the comments below because of course there are tons of decks you can play going into set eight and I can't hit all of them in this video. These are just the ones that I'm going to recommend to you and say, hey, I think these are pretty strong. You should probably consider playing them for these reasons. But before we do guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video. Want to get involved in the Dragon Ball Super community, make sure to check out the Discord in the description below. And finally guys, three ways you can help the channel out. Number one, the Patreon in the description below, lots of competitive content for you. Number two, if you want to buy or pre-order any of the cards you see in this video, make sure to use my link to TCG Player or Beater Collectibles in the description below. Finally guys, the join button is down below for the YouTube channel memberships. All this stuff is more important than ever guys. If you've been keeping up with the FTC and COPPA stuff, uh, it's a pretty scary time to be a YouTuber right now, especially for a gaming channel uh, like this is. Uh, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go to yesterday's video and go to the description. You guys can catch up all on that and actually help the YouTubers um, kind of fight back because we are, we are getting screwed right now. So make sure to check that out if you guys care enough. But with that being said, we will get into this video and with say hey, coming out man i'm so excited to start talking about some of these strategies first up we have red green so uh we're not gonna really talk about like decks per se in this video like no deck lists there's not there's usually no deck list in this video but we are going to talk about more concepts now there's a lot of ways you can go with red green you can go clash coup you could go uh yamcha you can go red green broly from set six a lot of ways you can go with this now a few reasons there's actually a lot of reasons why red green is really buffed of course shenron ramp is no longer a thing neither is Purunga ramp now that world piece is errated you can't bring back westing uh resting weiss attendant so you really can't ramp into kaioken son goku with that being said kaioken son goku is still one of the most powerful boss monsters in the game and the way to play him now is probably in a red green strategy that can efficiently get 20 to the drop pretty much like clash coup but there are some versions of yamcha in the past that have done well and you could tech this guy as a one or two of in like a red green broly deck but he's the main boss monster of red green and he's still a super big powerhouse so of course playing red green to play him is a no-brainer besides that tons of good red green support you have beerus godly majesty you pitch that off topo which every red green deck is probably going to play you're going to get a free 15k body to start beating face in the board with you've got chi chi motherly majesty another excellent reason to play this card and you have other good leaders that can support this archetype you know bulma like Bulma, I don't, I don't think the code has been cracked on Bulma yet, and of course she makes sense with red-yellow stuff because she got a lot of support surrounding her in set 8, but besides the yellow and red blocker thing, I mean, your red sands will all still be blockers, even with the red-green, but the draw 2, like the draw 2 on the awakened side, that's huge for arrival. Like the reason that Chi-Chi Mudley Majesty is so good for arrival is because it mitigates the neg to arrival, but if you can draw 2 every single turn, that's also going to mitigate the neg for arrival so you have really strong strategies coming out for red green you know as much as you know red yellow and uh blue green are being supported in set eight these older color combinations are being supported a lot as well so i uh, strongly recommend checking those out and messing around with them next up we're going to talk a little bit about hatchiak so hatchiak is probably one of the strongest uh mono black decks coming out of set eight i mean it's the only one coming out of set eight, but as far as mono black is going to go for the future of the game, I think Hatchiak is going to be incredibly powerful because, of course, it is a floodgate type of effect and floodgates are super strong, uh, especially in the Dragon Ball Super card game, especially when you can limit your opponent's number of attacks per turn. So if you guys don't know what he does real quick, one of his autos on both sides is when a player attacks with a battle card that is a seven drop or less, that player can only attack with that battle card. For the duration of that turn so of course Hatchiak's main deck boss monster the five drop Hatchiak it increases itself to an eight drop if you are playing a black machine mutant leader so it can get around this effect and then you can attack with the rest of your ghost warriors now I'm not 100% sold on that version of the deck I mean it's just it seems to struggle with hand size and it seems to struggle with actually winning the game like you might be able to stall your opponent out but do you have a real enough wing edition that's usually gonna be the question when you're talking about mono black Hatchiak at least in the context of set eight 
but we've been seeing a lot of builds floating around the internet especially other youtube channels and you see overrealm hatchy act builds because there's a lot of mono black support it's not necessarily for hatchy act but hatchy act can use it pretty well so you have a hatchy act build with like Fool the dark vanisher as the wing edition because he is an eight drop he has triple attack so he gets around hatchy acts uh, Hachi X auto to restrict those attacks and then you play the ISR Goku from uh, set six I believe that refills your drop area four cards once per turn so you have a triple attack on a 25k beat stick and then for the previous turn you have that double striking Goku you have your leader 20k swing that's a really strong win condition by turn five you know that's a potential of you know six to seven damage on that turn depending on how your turn looks so I think mono black hatchiac is going to evolve into something like this I think you should be on the lookout for that if you haven't seen this type of hatchiac build yet next up we have victory strike strategies so a lot of people think and I'm not sure where I fall on the line with this yet but a lot of people think that Hatchiac is going to be a very polarizing deck. Like, very specific strategies are going to be needed to beat Hatchiac. And one of those strategies is Victory Strike. Whether it's Broly Head of Mastery, whether it's U7 Frieza, whether it's uh, some other type of U7 deck, Victory Strike is going to be one of your main ways to beat Hatchiac because they can't get the attack. Black, Mono Black doesn't really have anything in the way of like Mafuba or other weird ways to stop victory strike they don't have like an arrival that can kill it mid battle so victory strike is one of the main ways to do that it's an eight drop so it gets around the hatchiac auto can't be negated and all you have to do is ping for one damage and they're done hatchiac is really good at stalling and keeping its life high because it doesn't always require a specific life total to awaken you know they can awaken at like six seven eight life but if you can get that one victory strike in and like I said, they can very much struggle with hand size as Hatchiac. This victory strike is going to get in there and win the game. Besides that, I mean, it seems decent against a bunch of other decks in the format. Not so much against the aggro decks, but you do have things like Bulma. You have things like Beerus where you can stall them at 8 life and they can't really do all that much about it. You might struggle a bit against the aggro strategies like uh, Goku Pan, Yellow Leader, like Vegeta Baby. But uh, you could always hybrid into a different type of deck. You also have the ability to play Nimbus because a lot of your deck is going to be yellow. So that can definitely help. Nimbus gets to turn four, turn five, depending on what variant you're playing. Drop Victory Strike, you might be able to drop the win in. But if you're really afraid of Hatchiac, I think uh, Victory Strike is probably the way to go. Next up, we have Red Yellow. There's so many Red Yellow archetypes to talk about, man. Vegeta Baby is the one I'm most excited for. That's just, uh, from what I've been testing on it, it's a very strong mid range. Uh, slash control deck you can kind of play both realms and I like that a lot I always like decks that give me that ability to play mid-range and aggro and kind of pivot back and forth from offense to defense but besides that you have the uh, Beerus archetype so you have a few different aggro variants like the ones that I've been posting uh, on my channel I think earlier this week I posted one and then you also have like a more mid-range build that just really takes advantage of a rival you really want to get that Beerus arrival into play. You want to get your Goku San Instincts to the drop area in order to just draw more cards. But then you have, obviously, like I mentioned before, the aggro build that's going to abuse familial bonds. Then you have Bulma. Bulma's a really interesting case. I talked about it a little bit just a few minutes ago. Bulma doesn't seem like it's been figured out yet, but I really feel like that draw two in the backside, there's something there that just really brings it over the top. I think it's just going to take the right archetype to do it. Now, I think the stuff that comes in set eight, I think it supports Bulma really, really well because she has, you know, birthday party. It allows you to pitch pieces for the Super Saiyan God Goku combo. And I think that's really strong. But again, I do think there's something else is just not quite there yet, but I think that people are going to figure that out very very soon with Bulma next up we've got blue yellow as a color scheme and again blue yellow another older archetype that got a ton of support coming out of set eight so of course you have the already strong cards you have grade eight bardock raiders war cry you have zeno button also keep in mind not related to blue yellow but zeno button is very abusable in blue green decks that use green leaders you know it's tough to use it in blue leaders that play blue green because tn is a card it can prevent you from activating zeno button but if you're gonna play a green leader zeno button is very abusable but back to blue yellow we already have the strong cards we have zeno button we have raiders war cry we have goku sand instincts and also we have the archetype of u6 which did really well at nationals there's no reason to really sleep on that deck it can struggle a bit against red where typical blue yellow good stuff doesn't necessarily struggle so much but one of the main cards that Blue Yellow is getting is the new uh, hit, the, the one energy 5k combo that says if you have a multicolor card in your energy, it becomes a zero 5k combo. It makes your arrivals way better. It is a universe six, so you can play it in Kaba easily. And it really just makes your arrivals a lot easier. You know, if you need to arrival in the Bojack blocker, you can do that. If you need to arrival in the uh, Goku Vegeta Saiyan Bonds card, 
that card draws you back a card when you arrival it so it almost means it came in for two energy uh for free you just you just play a two energy two drop that negates the skills of one of your opponent's battle cards so that's super duper strong and uh, i like that a lot going for blue yellow of course you also have the three drop my which blue yellow doesn't have the strongest multicolor battle cards but it has decent ones that could be brought back with my the three drop just an interesting thing to consider and look at but i think that i think that hit is really the reason to look at blue yellow again and uh, of course the last one we're going to look at here assemble the squad strategies particularly in my opinion kaba so the thing with shenron is it really does seem nerfed to the ground at least as far as tall strategies go you're not going to be uh, seeing too much around gogeta in my opinion i just i've been testing it post a rata list and it's just not nearly as strong as it was you can't keep as much of a hand size i can't fit super dragon ball into the curve well because then i can't tap out for uh shenron figure and majesty on four i just don't feel comfortable doing that so i think assemble the squad strategies are going to make a slight rise nothing too crazy but i do think assemble the squad veggies with the Perunga leader is insane of course Perunga also got ratted to say it can only revive a three drop or less but guess what San teamwork kava is a three drop or less and it's win condition the new champa out of the draft box that says pay an energy pitch two cards give your entire board of aliens and uh gods double strike plus 10k that's also a three drop so that works for Perunga's ultimate this is a pretty degenerate aggro strategy so uh, of course it does have its checks and answers but it is a really strong strategy nonetheless wish playing things for free still something strong to consider for sure so guys overall these are the six decks that i thought of that you guys should consider moving into the next format let me know what you think in the comments below thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you next time